greetings to everyone now in this video lecture we are going to learn about the 14 principles of management given by henry fiol and these principles are the most popular principles let's see the all the 14 principles one by one first of all what i'm going to tell you what we are going to cover in this video lecture so topics will be covered in this video are administrative theory we will cover this topic then uh, in a broad classification the six major activities of business operations we will look into that and then we will see all the 14 principles of the management given by Henry Fiol so let us start with the administrative theory again this theory is given by Henry Fiol which was later developed and modified by some other uh, theorists also the management gurus so uh, first in the beginning it was given by Henry Fiol so let's see about this administrative theory first let's know about henry fiol he was from france and he developed this theory as i said you so this approach this theory focuses on principles that can be used by managers to coordinate the internal activities of organizations like uh, uh, activity of planning activity of organizing uh, directing and controlling so uh, these are the four basic activities uh, to be uh, done in every organization the planning the organizing the directing and the controlling these are the four fundamental basic principles of any organization so it explains the process of managing an organization from the top managerial level to the bottom executive level so henry fuel was considered as the founder of this classical management school and he was the first to investigate managerial behavior and also to systematize it so henry fiol is also known as the father of modern management theory now fiol classifies business operations into six major activities and those six major activities are first is managerial activity which is related purely with the planning and organizing of a business managerial activity second is technical activity which is related to the production of the organization third is related to commercial that is buying and selling of each and every goods items to be used in the organization fourth and most important is financial activity which is related to use of each and every fund in the organization now <clears throat> fifth is fixed activity the major activity related to any business operation is accounting which is keeping the track of all financial records of the organization the sixth important business operation is security which is related to protection of all and each and every type of resources of the organization now let us see all the 14 principles of management of the henry fuel one by one so the first principle is related to division of labor henry fuel has given a stress on the specialization of jobs okay a specialization leads to efficiency in all spheres of business so he recommended that work of all kinds must be divided then must be subdivided and should be allotted to various persons according to their expertise in that particular area he also says that subdivision of work makes it simpler and increases efficiency in results it also helps the individual in acquiring and speed and accuracy in his performance so the division of labor helps the individual in acquiring speed and accuracy in his performance then second is the second principle is the party of authority and responsibility in this principle henry fuel says that authority and responsibility are coexisting in nature authority and responsibility are coexisting in 
nature. So, if authority is given to a person, he should also be made responsible. In a same way, if anyone is made responsible for any job, he should also be given concerned authority. So, authority refers to the right of superiors to get exact results from their subordinates. Whereas, responsibility means obligation for the performance of the job assigned. This is the literal meaning of responsibility and authority. Also, the authority without responsibility leads to irresponsible behavior whereas responsibility without authority makes the person ineffective. There should be a balance between the two. They must go hand in hand. Means the authority and the responsibility must go hand in hand. Third is the principle of one boss. <coughs> a subordinate should receive order or should receive orders from one boss and should be accountable to one boss and only one boss at a time. In other words, a subordinate should not receive instructions from more than one person because if suppose for example one subordinate is receiving princip uh, receiving orders or instructions from two or more bosses, what will happen? It may undermine the authority of the different bosses. Okay. It also may weaken the discipline of the organization. Also, it divides the loyalty of the subordinate, subordinate towards its managers. It may create confusion among the subordinates if more than one person is giving command or instruction to subordinates at a time, at a particular given time. It may create uh, confusion, may divide the loyalty and it may result in delay of the uh, uh, output and may create chaos among the subordinate. It may result in escaping responsibility in part of the subordinates. S also, sometimes it may happen duplication of work may occur. Means the same work is allotted by two different um, managers to the same subordinate at the two different times. Also, overlapping of efforts may occur. So. Uh, uh, it this should be avoided and at a time one subordinate should receive instruction from one and only one boss. Therefore, dual subdivision should be avoided unless and until it is absolutely essential. Unity of command provides the enterprise a disciplined, stable and orderly existence. It creates harmonious relationship between superiors and subordinates. Let's see the fourth principle, the unity of directions. Now, fuel advocates one head and one plan, which means that there should be one plan for a group of activities having similar objectives. Related activities should be grouped together. There should be one plan of action for them and they should be under the charge or of a particular manager. So, the principle says that efforts of all the members of the organization should be directed towards common goal. Without unity of directions, unity of actions cannot be achieved. So, in other words, unity of commands is not possible without unity of directions. Fifth principle is related to equity. Equity refers to combination of fairness, kindness and justice. So, the employees should be treated with kindness and equity. If devotion is expected from the employees too. This implies that managers should be fair and impartial while dealing with the subordinates or juniors. They should treat people similarly if they are at similar position. Subordinates should not be discriminated with respect to their age, their caste, their sex, religion, re relation or, or on, on the basis of any such criteria. But equity does not mean total absence of harshness. Fayol was of opinion that at times force and harshness 
might become necessary for the sake of equity. Now, the sixth principle is related to the order. This principle is concerned with proper and systematic arrangement of things and people. Arrangement of things is called material order while placement of people is called social order. So, material order, what does it mean? That there should be a safe, appropriate and a specific place for every article to be kept in the organization. And also re related to human resource, every place should be effectively used for a specific activity and commodity. So uh, for every uh, activity or for every commodity, there should be a specific place and um, all the articles are should be sa kept safely and carefully at that particular specified space. Now related to human resource, social order selection and appointment of most suitable person on the suitable job should be maintained okay means suitable person should be sent for a for the particular job for the suitable job or the person should be allotted suitable job according to their capability okay now there should be a specific place assigned to everyone and everyone should be present on their specific place so that they can easily be contacted whenever and wherever needed okay seventh principle is related to discipline so according to fiol discipline refers to sincerity obedience respect of authority and adherence of rules and adherence of regulations of the enterprise or the organization so this principle says that subordinates should respect their superiors and obey their orders. Discipline is an important requisite for a smooth running of the enterprise. Discipline is not only required on the part of subordinates but also on the part of management. Discipline can be enforced whenever and wherever required if there are good supervisor at all levels. Discipline can be enforced if there are clear and fair arrangements with workers and if mm, discipline is enforced can be enforced when um, mm, sanctions or punishments are judicially applied now eighth principle is related to initiative what does henry fuel say about this he says that workers should be encouraged to take initiative in the work assigned to them this means employees should show eagerness to initiate actions without being asked to do so. Fuel advised that management should provide opportunity to its employees to share ideas, to share experiences and to share new method of works. It should help in developing an atmosphere of trust and understanding. Now, people will then enjoy working in the organization because it adds to the zeal and adds to the energy of the organization and to the employees too. So, employees can be encouraged for positive initiatives with the help of monetary and non-monetary incentives. Now, ninth principle is related to fair remunerations. The quantum and method of remuneration to be paid to the workers should be fair and should be reasonable, should be satisfactory and of course it should be rewarding towards the efforts of the employees. So, fair remunerations will accord satisfaction to both employees and employers. Wages should be determined based on cost of living, work assigned, financial position of the business and according to wage rate. So, appropriate wage rates and methods of their payments should be adopted Should and it should reduce the tension and should reduce the differences between workers and should reduce the tension between the workers and the management. So, this will also create a harmonious relationship and pleasing atmosphere at the workplace. Now, FIOL also recommended provisions of other benefits such as provision of free education to workers, provision of free medical facility to the employees, provision of free residential facilities to the employees, which can be adopted in the organization or the enterprise. Principle 10 deals with the stability of tenure. 
Fiol emphasized that employees should not be moved frequently from one job position to another unnecessarily. That is, the job area should be fixed. Therefore, employees should be appointed while keeping in view the general principles of recruitment and selection. But once they are appointed, their services should be stable. So, according to Fiol, employees require time to get used to in a new work and be efficient in doing it well. But if he is removed before that, he would not be able to render worthwhile services. So, without stability in tenure, the time, the effort, the money spent on training of the worker, all the things will go waste. So, stability of job creates team spirit and create, creates a sense of belongingness among workers. This ultimately increases the quality as well as quantity of the work. Now, let us see the 11th principle which is related to a scalar chain of the authority and the responsibility. Fiol defines a scalar chain as the chain of superiors ranging from the higher authority to the lowest level in the organization. So, for each and every activity to be performed, there should be a scalar change of authorities ranging from higher authority to the lowest level in the organization. So, every order, every instruction or every message and every explanation must pass through the specified scalar chain. But in the need of urgency and for convenience, this path can be cut short and the new method of cutting the sh path shorter in the need of urgency is also known as gang's plank. So, gang's plank is the cut short path of the scalar chain. So, gang's plank clarifies that management free principles are not rigid at all. Rather, they are flexible. They can be molded, they can be modified and they can be governed as per the requirement or the situation. Next is the principle number 12 which is related to conversion of individual interest to the general interest. What does it mean? That an organization is much bigger than any individual. Therefore, interest of the organization should be prevail in all circumstances. The interest of the organization should be on the top most level above all and everyone. So, understanding should be achieved between individual and group interest. So, uh, there should be a good understanding between the individual and the group interest. But in case of conflict, individual must sacrifice for bigger interest of the group. So, to achieve this position, it is essential that employees should be honest and sincere, proper and regular supervision of work must prevail, settlement of differences and settlement of clashes by mutual ag agreement must be done. For example, if we have to change uh, the profit sharing ratio among the different groups, there should be a mutual consent between the groups or we have to change the location of an, any group then there should be a mutual consent between the groups and uh, clashes should be avoided. Now, <coughs> 13th principle is related to spirit the corps. What does it mean? It refers to team spirit. So, team spirit means the harmony in the work groups and mutual understanding among the workers. Team spirit refers to harmony among the work groups and among the workers. So, a spirit the corps inspires workers to work harder. Fiol cautioned the managers against dividing the employees into competitive groups because it might damage the moral of the worker and interest of the organization in the long run. So, to teach a spirit the corps following steps should be followed by the managers though these steps are there should be proper coordination of work at all levels the managers have to look after that this and subordinates subordinates should be encouraged to develop 
informal relations among themselves. Subordinates should be cooperative and coordinating among themselves. Also, efforts should be made to create enthusiasm and passion among employees so that they can work to their maximum ability. Also, efficient employees should be rewarded and those who are not up to the mark should be given a chance to improve their performance. Employees should be made aware of that whatever they are doing is of great importance to the business and is of great importance to the society. The 14th and the last principle is related to centralization and decentralization. Centralization means concentration of power at the top level authority. Okay, Centralization means the power is only at the top level authority and no further level of authorities are given any power. Also centralization is a situation in which top management retains most of the decision making authority. Whereas decentralization means disposal of decision making authority to all the levels of the organization which means sharing of power is done from the top level to the bottom level in the decentralization process. So, according to Fiol, degree of decentralization and degree of centralization depends on a number of factors like size of the business. If the business size is quite bigger, decentralization is a must requirement. Experience of supervisors. If um, uh, supervisors are quite experienced, then they can be given some powers from the higher authorities to the superior uh, supervisors level. Means decentralization can be done. Fear then also depends on the dependability and ability of subordinate. If subordinates are s capable of doing the things on themselves, then the powers can be decentralized. And if they are not capable, then centralization is a must. So anything which increases the role of subordinates is decentralization whereas anything which decreases the role of subordinate is centralization so fiol suggests that absolute centralization or absolute decentralization is not feasible but organization should strive to achieve a lot between the two few other administrative theorists were Weber, Fiol, Giolik, Sheldon, Mooney, Riley, and Yulwick. They also fared, favored the administrative theory of Henry Fiol and this modified this administrative theory to some extent. Now, Fiol gave five most important elements of the management. These five elements are Planning, organizing, coordinating, controlling, and commanding. So, according to Henry Fiol, the five most important elements or powers or activities of any management or within an organization are planning, then organizing, coordinating, controlling, and commanding. Henry Fiol emphasized that management skills are of universal nature and can be applied in all types of organization can be applied in all types of organization whether it be a production house whether it be a service providing organization or an educational enterprise or educational institution or any medical uh, service provider all types of um, many organizations can adopt and uh, use the skills of uh, management and that is why Henry Fiol is also known as the father of the modern management theory with this we are ending this lecture or this video uh, in the next video we will we'll come to know some more important points of management till then goodbye have a good day